All right, what is going on guys? Coach Joe here at the Lions Den. Today we have Mr. Brad Arbic here. Brad pulls like 9,000 pounds on a deadlift. I pull like zero pounds. So basically what we're gonna do today is he's going to un my deadlift. Uh, so he's just gonna give me some tips what he sees with my deadlift. My goal is to pull 800 pounds uh, within the year. Right now, my last current PR is 745, but that was a year ago. So I don't know where it's really currently at. So I think some cues will help me get better. Always trying to be open-minded, always trying to learn. He knows a lot about the deadlift. He's trained with a lot of top guys, coached a lot of top guys. So I'm just here to be the student in the game. So how are you feeling today? Feeling pretty good. Just uh, got a good nice rest. Good uh, food in my belly from last night, so I'm feeling all right. So, you know, you talked for a while now about wanting to improve your deadlift. You know, the goal here is 800 pounds. Um, I've pulled over 800 pounds and hit 800 probably a dozen or more times. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with deadlifts. Uh, so we're just gonna kind of go through a session and I'll see what I can see and maybe I have some recommendations that'll help things out. Yeah, so uh, as I set up, I'm a huge fan of the conventional stance, and my conventional stance is much more narrow than most people's. So my, I try to have my feet right under my hips. Um, I feel like that gives me the most power. And then as I pull, it's not so much a hip hinge where I'm, I'm hinging at, at the waist, but rather if I can keep my chest high and drive with my legs and my hips and push the world away from me. So it's, it's a much, much more integrated movement if you do it like that. So trying to avoid the two-part movement where it's, you know, it's hips up and then here, but rather, you know, hips and chest at the same time. So not legs and then this, that's bad. Chest up, drive. So I, when you see me do it like that, you can see that my chest and my hips rise together at the same time. It's not one than the other. All right, so I get a lot of questions about uh, how to warm up or how to get to where you're going on deadlifts. And so typically when I train, if I'm going up into the, the higher the higher echelons of my pole, I'll take a couple sets of 135 at, at 10 reps. That's really where I'm getting warm. After that, I go 225 for five, 315 for three, and then after 315, everything is singles. And I'm basically making plate jumps until I get where I'm going. One of the biggest mistakes I see people make is making too small a jump to get where they're going. So they end up burning too much energy uh, and getting themselves to their one rep max. The point is to be warm sufficiently and get where you're going and, and not waste any energy. So what you're doing is like you're you were a little lazy on the glute activation coming up top, and so that, that finish isn't quite as strong. If you squeeze those glutes hard, even if you stand here, if you squeeze your glutes, look what happens. Look what happens when you pushes the hip forward. Yeah. So uh, as soon as you crest that knee, yep. <laughs> you can't see what Joe's doing, but it's it's epic. But as soon as you crest that knee, start squeezing those glutes and drive the hips forward, it'll help you finish that lift stronger. Doing good. Uh, back's a little sore, so I'm chilling on four or five, but it's getting good technique working. Yeah. Good. Squeeze. Better. Chest up. Squeeze. Good. Chest up. Squeeze. Good. Chest up. Squeeze. Good. Squeeze. Good. I just deadlifted and my nose exploded. So I am officially a freaking deadlifter today, baby. 
All right, see if we can get this thing to just keep running the whole time for theatrical purposes. But uh, yeah, good stuff. Just looking at, at, at Joe's deadlift, like he's a super powerful lifter, right? Like so when somebody's as strong as he is, there aren't a lot of things that you can do to make big sweeping changes. A lot of things that are gonna make a difference for him are gonna be more incremental. So one thing that I'm looking at is as he's setting up and strapping in, he's doing it while he's kind of standing and bent over. Um, whether you intend to or not, that's gonna, that's gonna fatigue the, the back to some degree. So my suggestion is that he takes the knee as he straps in, and then once he's locked in, stands and then goes. And then the other thing that I'm gonna ask him to do is look a little bit further out. So he tends to be looking kind of directly right in front of him, only like two or three feet down at the ground. What I'm gonna ask him to do is look more out, like 10 or 15 feet in front of him, and keep his eyes on a singular point. And that'll just create a little bit less motion in his, in his upper body, and hopefully help him get a little bit more locked in so we don't lose any positioning in that upper thoracic. Good. Put your hair, come on, chest high. Sweet, huh? <laughs> Spill 700. Those cues definitely help from Brad, uh, focusing on getting strapped in at the bottom instead of in that bent over position. And then keeping my gaze a little bit more forward, uh, I think keeps me tighter. And uh, I just felt like I got a better pull. So definitely knows what he's talking about. Definitely gonna use that uh, with my deadlift. I really haven't been deadlifting much, like in terms of conventional deadlift. I've been doing a lot more frame deadlifts, trap bar stuff because that's in my competition. Uh, so I'm just happy to hit 700. You know, once I get back into deadlifting more with conventional pulling, I uh, feel like we're gonna get some quick improvement. Uh, but overall, just having fun, learning a lot, getting some bloody noses, being a freaking badass. It's great. Get it, come on. All day, dude. Yeah! So I'm gonna go for the gym record. Uh, so Joe and uh, DK currently have kind of joint uh, holding of the record at 745. Uh, so I'm going to bump to 765 and, uh, and see if I can't take the gym record here. Yo. That's what we're doing. I think you can do it. I'm excited for him to do it. This is great. I love when people come in here and just smash it, dude. Uh, it's been a great training session. So we're going to get him amped. We're going to give him some nose torque, some back slaps. And he's going to rip this crap off the floor. So let's do it. Come on. All right, let's go! Go! Come on, Brad! Break that record, Brad! Easy! Come on! Nice, dude! Let's go! Come on, Brad! All right, Brad, how about that big 765 pull feel? Oh, it was good. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, I don't want to be, like, anticlimactic, but it's a, it's a number that I'm pretty comfortable with. Um, but you know, it's like traveling and being in a different setting. It's you know, it's always a little bit different. So I'm I'm very grateful to, to come here and have the opportunity. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. So something you were just talking about me with, with and you didn't want to say while I was deadlifting was belt position. Yeah. So can you maybe explain that, and then I'm going to try to do it. Uh, yeah. And see if it affects my belt at all. Absolutely. So I, I have my belt on right now, and so what I noticed is Joe's position is is low, more here, because he's got the the under belt, the soft belt, and then he has the, the, his over belt or the the hard belt. And so he has this real low position where it's kind of like at or below the navel line. And so I just happen to notice it. I tend to ride my belt higher so that the belt in the front is just up under my rib cage. I like that because once I have the belt on and tight and I get that good breath, I, I physically cannot cave forward. Like it, I just, there's just no way I can do it. And so as long as I hold that breath, I'll maintain that good position. And so it helps me avoid that, that thoracic rounding and I just happened to notice that he, he rides his belt a little bit low. So I'm just curious as a variable 
to, to do a couple sets maybe with a, light, a little bit lower weight and just test riding that belt a little bit higher to see how it feels for him because I, I think it might make a difference. Wow. <laughs> What's up? All right, Matt. So did, were any of the tips that Brad was helping you with you think like would help transfer over your deadlift? Oh, 100 percent. So uh, the one big one uh, he was talking about is uh, squeezing my glutes at the very end. Um, that was basically getting me through the lockout faster. Um, that's an easy tip you should always be thinking about. And it was literally ramping me through that kind of last bit super quick. And the other part was um, just keeping my chest up. So he definitely had me in a, a higher chest position than I'm used to, and I was really liking it. So, so yeah. you're going to play with that moving forward? Oh, 100%. Yeah. yeah. Always, always learning. We're always growing and we're always learning, Brad. <laughs> it's the whole thing, right? Never, yeah. Always a white belt. Always. The, 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 the thing that I'm grateful for is to be able to be around like guys like yourselves with the experience that you have and still be able to offer something. Um, and then, you know, so I can offer a little bit, but I'm also learning as, as I come here as well. So like, just not, not being too, too boastful or too prideful to accept a little bit of a uh, little criticism. If nothing else, just pause for thought, for consideration, like might this help? All right guys, so we just wrapped up the deadlift session. A lot of fun for me. Really haven't been doing many conventional deadlifts uh, just because I've been focusing on uh, the frame and a lot of trap bar variations to be more specialized for my comp. Uh, but once I'm done with that competition, I'm really serious to get back into deadlifting. So uh, it's nice to have Brad here, very knowledgeable, knows a lot about uh, powerlifting and specifically deadlifting. So it's cool to maybe get some feedback uh, from him. Now, something that I have a question for, uh, and if you guys have been following me on the channel, you know my journey with the deadlift has just been ongoing. So when I first started, I used to do a ton of accessory uh, movements that I thought would help my deadlift, and that was for a couple years. And then I got introduced uh, to Alan Thrall as my coach, and basically his principle behind, uh, or his methodology behind increasing my deadlift was just doing more deadlifts and deadlift variations themselves. So I was just kind of wondering, like, what are your thoughts uh, for how you go about programming for the deadlift? Like, you have your main deadlift now. Do you do a ton of smaller accessory movements to strengthen that deadlift, or do you do more deadlift variations, maybe like block pulls or pause deadlifts as those accessory lifts? Like, how do you attack that, or is it individual? Like, what are your thoughts? So I've never been big on a whole lot of variation stuff. I'm sorry, not variation, but accessory stuff. Um, so there are there is a school of thought that adding on a lot of accessory work will really round out the deadlift. I've been more of the variation. Um, so I, I feel like the the motor pattern of deadlifting, the best way to get good at that is doing it. Um, so very kind of in line with, with Alan's thought. Um, I found that at times where, depending on where you're failing, uh, it's good to work on that spot. So if you tend to have difficulty with the lockout, you know, doing some more block pulls or pin pulls. Um, if you have some difficulty off the floor, some isometric, you know, pulls uh, where you, you know, uh, have the bar kind of locked by the, um, or with a rack and pulling against a rack that's like pinned down. Mm -hmm. That way the bar literally cannot move and doing, you know, five, 10 second holds as an isometric hold uh, to, to kind of exercise that feeling of patience off the floor. Um, I feel like the best way to work on the deadlift is to figure out where your heart or your failure points are and work on that portion of the lift prescriptively. Mm -hmm. So using those variations, vice using uh, too much accessory work. Yeah. Uh, so I guess we're probably more in line with the same train of thought there, but I always want to ask, uh, cause if, you know, we're always here trying to learn and, and get better as coaches and athletes. Uh, what do you think is one of the biggest mistakes you often see people making with the deadlift is? Patience. So the one thing with deadlift is, is being patient. So it, it's especially true if you're a sumo puller, uh, being patient off the floor and not rushing the lift and, and kind of panicking. Um, but same thing with, with conventional pull is being patient and allowing the, the lift to kind of be what it is. Um, a lot of people that are a little bit more novice, if the bar doesn't jump right off the floor, they panic and give up. Where if you kind of maintain your position and hold fast and continue to drive and fight through that lift, um, you tend to be more successful. Um, so I've just found often with those novices or guys that just kind of hit me up randomly in the gym, the patience off the floor is a really, really big thing. Nice. Um, yeah, so I mean, hopefully you guys are taking notes on all this kind of stuff. And one of the biggest things, like he has said, is just being patient. And I think that comes with just doing more reps and understanding the lift more. Like I know when I first started, I would get stuck and I would panic and I thought that I just couldn't get the lift. But over time, you realize you can push through that threshold and that barrier and end up making those lifts oftentimes. And 
when we were doing uh, our press workout the other day. Uh, if you guys didn't see that video, I'll link it up right here. That was something you were talking about with DK. Like a more advanced lifter knows that they can press through those sticky points, get their mm -hmm. head through, finish the press. So the same applies with the deadlift. Uh, but honestly, just had a blast doing our deadlifts. I worked up to a 700 pound pull. I was very happy with that for today. I'm at the end of my training block. There's been a ton of fatigue accumulating. Uh, it's been a long couple of days for me. So for me to be able to come in, use the cues that Brad had given me, really helped, felt a difference. And I'm, uh, I'm really excited to implement that moving forward. So when you get more advanced, just those little minute things like he had mentioned that are gonna make a difference in your deadlift. Uh, and you know, we got to be able to do that today, execute them and, and they were really cool. So uh, lastly, where can they find you Brad? Make sure you guys are subscribed to Brad's channel, following him, he's very knowledgeable. Uh, I wouldn't have someone on the channel who I didn't respect and uh, appreciate uh, them as a coach and an athlete. So just plug yourself away, man. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at, uh, at Brad underscore Arbic. Last name is spelled A-R-B-I-C. Um, or you can find me on YouTube. Just type in Brad Arbic and um, there's only, only me. There's not any yeah, other yeah. Arbic. So. And the last thing real quick too is tell them about just train despite. What does that mean to you? So um, that's kind of what I call the channels despite fitness. And the idea is uh, everyone's got an excuse. So no matter who you are, you have a reason not to train, right? I don't feel good, you know, whatever, insert excuse. And so it's, it's getting in and, and hitting your goals is really about rising above your excuse and getting in and training despite. And so the, ultimately that's kind of how I, how I end my, all my videos is I talk about you either find an excuse or you find a way. And I hope that you continue to find the way. And so like with all our training, we all have a reason not to. And I hope that you guys continue to, to drive forward. One thing, one thing that just kind of crossed my mind to, to round this out in terms of being able to progress is, is a lot of people when they reach that sticking point, they keep going back to the sticking point and find that it's, it's still a sticking point. Training needs to continue to get harder. So we've given you a couple cues and things that we can try to implement to, to make your lifts a little bit more effective. And so in order to kind of uh, to break that plateau of where you're at, what I would say is like come back down a little bit lower from where that max is and implement some of those techniques and increase that volume ever so slightly. So if, you know, instead of doing the one rep max at 745 and you know, we break it down to the 600s where you're doing some, some more rep work and then make your, make your PRs there where you're in the 600 range and you hit a three rep max or a four rep max or a five rep max. Because if you can get better at those sub maximal weights, you're gonna get better at the maximal weights. And it, it happens over time. So that patience there too is hypercritical. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with that statement. Uh, and like he had said, I'm gonna start working backwards a little bit here, taking that one step back to so hopefully give me those three step forward. Uh, but you know, like I said, guys, can't appreciate Brad hanging out with me enough. Uh, I'm always trying to learn and grow, so it's always nice to just keep your ego at the door, let other people come in, kind of just pick their brains on what works for them, take the things that you can use and apply it. So guys, always stay humble, always stay open-minded, uh, and of course, stay Lean Mean Strike Machine. We'll catch up with you guys next time. Thanks, Brad. Peace. Peace.